Hello, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to go over, I guess, what you could call the chronology of spiritual growth in Mormon Kabbalah. And I'm, I made an, an image, an illustrator, to illustrate some of the teachings found in the Plates of Brass. And these are teachings that you can find in the Bible. But as Joseph Smith taught, the plain and precious things were definitely removed. And so it's a bit easier to find this information in, in, a, in a very easy to understand way in the plates of brass. And so some of this is going to come from the Book of Melchizedek. Some of it's going to come from uh, the Torah of Moses and the writings of Zenos. Um, oh, that's the third one, the writings of Zenos, sorry. Uh, so it, it's going to come from, from several different places. I'm just going to kind of do my best to, to put together where it comes from because I'm, I'm doing all this off the cuff. So let's start off with the image as a whole and as you can see here we have that that isn't actually earth clearly but you know a planet like earth in the background to represent our lives and then you have this darkness that goes up in the light and then these circles and, and what does it all mean well let's start off with where we begin and that's in the darkness if we read in Genesis or in First Moses, when you go through the creation process, the, the very first thing that happens is the Lord separates the light from the darkness. Now, we have two options here because we have free agency. We can break through that veil. And in the Book of Mormon, this veil could be seen as that mist. You know, you're, you're holding on to the iron rod and there's that mist you can disappear in. That mist leads into this, this darkness, this abyss. And so you can sink into the abyss or you can be born again. And as it says in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, this idea of the light shining through the darkness, that's the light that shines through this veil and allows us to be born again. Now, as we're born again, it begins, of course, with, like I said, God separating the light from the darkness. And then you have the earth being formed here. You've got the waters and you've got, you've got the land coming up out of the waters and the grass growing. And then suddenly you have the stars, the moon, and, the, and the, the sun. And it goes through all this creation process until finally Adam and Eve are born. And Adam and Eve represent the male and female inside of us. And, and I've gone through these, these seven days of creation as the days of Teshuva and the month-long Teshuva meditation in other videos before. So I'm not going to get into that a whole lot this time. But as we're doing this, we're really between these two veils. We see the light in that, that veil above us in, in the picture here, and we see the darkness. And, and we've tasted of the fruit. We're holding on to the iron rod, and we have a choice. We can go towards that tree of life, or we can go away from it. But all this represents the very first Sephirot. You have Malkuth, which is the kingdom. It's where we begin everything in the tree of life and you really have all of the lower seven sephirot here between that veil of darkness and the veil of light that we move around in because this is the creation and what we're trying to do we can see the light we can feel the light of god the light of god our our, our hearts are broken and so we're able to allow that light of christ to move through us i've talked about that before but what we want to do is we want to penetrate that veil of light. We want to move through this cosmic filter, if you will. We want, to, we want to pierce that veil. We want to move forward in the grace of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to go into Sephirot in this video because I, I don't want this to be too overwhelming. But once we get to that point to where we're able to break through this veil, we've, we've done the days of Teshuvah enough to where we now receive revelation. And remember, the point of the Book of Mormon, I've, I've talked about this also, is to help bestow upon us, to help us receive the spirit of prophecy and revelation. We pray for revelation from God. We want to know, is Jesus the Christ? Is the Book of Mormon the Word of God? When we receive an answer to that prayer, we are receiving revelation. We are all now prophets, and that's why the Lord says he wants us to be a prophetic people. That's why the Lord gave us the Book of Mormon, is so that we could become his prophetic people. So now, we have these seven dispensations. 
These are the seven thrones. And this, after we get past this veil of light, and the veil of light is mentioned in Melchizedek, along with the veil of darkness. These seven thrones are mentioned in Fourth Moses by Zipporah. She says the first firmament is called the Shemayim of Eretz and holds the seven thrones. And the Shemayim of Eretz means the heavens of the earth. So what are these seven thrones? Well, earlier in the chapter, and this is in chapter 39, by the way, she mentions that there are 12 rows and seven thrones, and the thrones are prepared there, and upon the thrones are seated, seated the seven Malcolm of seven dispensation. So what are these Malcolm? Well, if you read the book of Zenos, it helps us to understand the book of Revelations better, and it goes through the seven dispensations. Now, we can look at this from a historical point of view, and we can say that the first dispensation is everything that happened during the time of, of Adam and Eve and then Enoch and so on and so forth. Remember that the scriptures in Mormon Kabbalah is a story of us. And so therefore, as we're doing these Teshuvah meditations, we've now graduated to a point to where now we're moving through the dispensations in a spiritual way in our own spiritual growth as we're deepening our personal relationship with God. And so these thrones represent the seven dispensations that we grow in in our spiritual lives. The second firmament is called the Shemayim of Shemayim, or the heavens of the heavens, and is the heavens of abstinence, which holds the 12 steps. What are these 12 steps? Well, these 12 steps are most likely Jacob's ladder. What is Jacob's ladder? In, in the book of Joseph, Jacob gives us revelations for his 13 children. So we can see these 12 steps as us climbing through or climbing up Jacob's ladder. Now here in Jacob's ladder, we do have an issue in that Jacob has 13 children, 12 are sons and one's a daughter, and there's only 12 steps. So what do we do here? Keep in mind that the 12 sons represent our ability or our desire to bestow. But in each of these, it does mention their daughters. And therefore, Dinah, the daughter, then gets applied to each of the steps as the feminine, the desire to receive. So if you're ever reading something in there and you're like, well, I'm not really sure how to understand this part about the daughter of whichever son, we can go to Dinah's revelation and gain more insight because she is there for all of the steps. But this is Jacob's ladder, his children. And we just go one son at a time up that ladder. Now, after this, everything starts to kind of mirror itself because now we have the third firmament, which is of the moon. And it says, this one is called the Shemayim of Atswa, which would be the heavens of the treasury or the treasury of heavens. And it holds the, st the three stones and the pearl of fire. So these are the phases of the moon. Well, there's only really, what, 30 days in the phases of the moon. So this is the four weeks of the Teshuvah cycle. This brings us right back down to the earth in a sense, because we do that Teshuvah cycle four times, and then that's a month. And then we keep doing them over and over again until we've done them for a year. Now going up to the fourth firmament, this is called the Shemayim of Be'amad, Aish. And it holds the 31 windows and at the center holds the sun, which the earth orbits. And in English, that would be the heavens of the pillar of fire. So obviously this is where the sun is. And then this is basically the 32 paths of the Sephirot. The fifth firmament is called the Shemayim of Geboa, and it separates the heavens and the earth, holding the twelve Malchium, or the twelve angels, that are the stars that shall judge the sons and daughters of mankind. Now, that sounds like the twelve apostles, based on my understanding, and that is called the heavens of exaltation in English. And you'll notice if you look at the picture, if we, we zoom out, you know, the, the 31 windows with the sun, and then these stars surround the whole earth, because 
there's going to be light and darkness in our journey. There's going to be times when we're in the light and there's going to be times when we're on the opposite side of the earth where there's darkness. And these 12 stars represent a full year. We have a week of Teshuvah, seven days, right? Then we have the lunar cycle, which gives us, we climb Jacob's ladder, we get to that lunar cycle. Now we've got four weeks of Teshuvah. That's a lunar month. Well, now we have this division of the stars and the heavens tying back to Jacob's ladder. So now we've been given 12 months, a full year. This is the full Teshuvah cycle. It's a day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year process of us growing in grace and deepening our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, the one thing that makes it a little bit more difficult is if you're reading in Second Moses, these sons and the one daughter, first off, there's 13 of them. So that's problematic. And the other problem, if you will, is that they're given in birth order, but each of them are given a month. And so I would recommend that we swap out the birth order for the month order. And when you get to the 12th and 13th month, or 12th or 13th month, I guess I should say, there's actually instructions there in the chapters so you know which one is which, when to use which one. So if you are cycling through these steps over and over again, and it gets really repetitious, you know you're done with that repetition and beginning them in a new way when you get the feminine step. Now, we can again take these back to that year-long path in Jacob's ladder, but keep in mind that this ties to the apostles and apostleship. So I believe that this is the point in our journey where we have our calling and election made sure, because what is an apostle? An apostle is one who is a special witness of Jesus Christ. Now, as prophets, with our testimonies of the Book of Mormon, we are all special witnesses of Jesus Christ because we have the first comforter. I believe that once we get to this level, this is where we receive the second comforter. And so now that Jacob's ladder takes a higher step that is unlocked that we can understand only once we reach this part of our spiritual journey. We're, we're redoing the same things, but with more knowledge and our deepened relationship with Jesus Christ, we're able to move in a higher plane of understanding. The sixth firmament is called the Shemayim of Tzadik, and it holds the flame that rules over the 12 Malchim. Now, what is the flame that rules over them? That is obviously God. Now, you could say that that's the Holy Spirit, you could say it's Jesus Christ, and I would say that both would be correct. But you notice that it's all-encompassing. It encompasses everything. There's no breaks in it. It's just this giant flame of the warmth and light of God. So as we've had our calling and election made sure, our journey isn't over. We can still deepen our relationship with Jesus. And by the way, that translates into English as the heavens of the righteous or the heavens of the just. And then in verse 19 of fourth Moses 39, 19, we have the seventh firmament, which is called the Shemayim of Or, and it holds light and all of the glory of God and is the light that separates the darkness and is the highest of the heavens. So when we see this veil all the way down here, that light that's piercing through comes from all the way up here from the top. And in English, that would be the heavens of light. So this is actually God. This is Keter. This is the crown. This is the highest we can go. And we look at this, we could say that, that this is the earth. And then when we get up to heaven, we have the telestial kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, and the celestial kingdom. And then from there, we have the celestial kingdom one, two, and three above us. But I think that's a bit of a superficial way of looking at it. I, I, I really honestly see these kingdoms as just the bodies that we receive. And, and I think that we can be in that highest light regardless of what body we are given. We're going to be given a body when we're resurrected that matches our souls, which matches our eternal spirits, who we always have been and who we always will be. And I do believe that this growth is something that we should want to do 
because of our love for God and because we want to be a part, we want to be an active part of his creation. And I think the Holy Spirit moves us to climb along this path. And I want to be very clear that there is no right or wrong in this. Someone isn't better than somebody else because they're at a certain level. We are all exactly where the Lord needs us to be, and therefore we're exactly where we should be in our spiritual growth in our lives. It's Satan that tries to push us and tell us that we're behind. God just wants us to take the time to love one another, help one another, grow together, and get to know him better and deepen that personal relationship that we can and should have with him, with the Lord. I fear that when we look at models like this, because of the way that our world works, where we see things as a ladder where, you know, you got to climb the corporate ladder. That's the way you say it in in my country because we're capitalists. That's not the way God looks at things. To him, the janitor is just as important as the CEO because nothing would get done without either of them. And one isn't higher than the other. We're all just placed where we need to be. And so as I'm sharing this with you, I want you to understand that we don't need to have a goal of getting to the highest heaven because if we've been born again, we're already there. We're already with God. There's nothing we need to grow into. The whole point of Mormon Kabbalah and the whole point of these paths isn't to better ourselves in the traditional sense It's to open our eyes so that we can see the goodness of God in a new light, which allows us to see how much he loves us, deepen that personal relationship, open us up to spiritual gifts, and allows us to assist our friend, the Lord, in the things that he needs accomplished. So part of me is very hesitant about making this video because I don't want people thinking they've got to climb this ladder as quickly as possible. Take your time. Understand what these things are and what they mean. Learn from them. Grow in them. If there's another system that works better for you, use that one. This is what I have found explains what works for me, what has worked for me, and allows me to teach those that are looking for a way to deepen their personal relationship with the Lord. It's not for everyone, and that's okay. So what's my message in this? What's my Thursday thought for you? My Thursday thought is that wherever you are in this journey, and you can see this as your own, you know, this, this image is your own personal Yehona, if you will. The scriptures are there more than just to tell you fun stories or interesting stories or to help you learn life lessons. The scriptures are there to tell you about you and where you are in this path, on this map, in comparison to anyone else in the world, is 100% irrelevant. So I don't want you to look at this map and say, I'm here, I need to get to here. I'd like for you to look at this map and say, I'm here, and I'm happy, and the Lord loves me where I am, and his hand is there, and when you're ready for the next step, it's right there waiting for you. But there's no need to rush. It's Satan that rushes us. He's the adversary. The Lord just wants us to love one another where we are and help one another grow, survive in any way that we need it. So my Thursday thought really is this. Know that you're loved. And with that love, love others. That's my Thursday thought. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.